guys, speechless is not how one would describe me. I got words all the time. <laughs> I got words. But I'm actually not able to quite speak this moment. To see the sea of you from up here looks like rain of God on earth to me. To hear the splendidness of this music, I'm just weeping with the beauty and power of you. Fred Craddock says sometimes a scripture should just be read and doesn't need to be preached. I think sometimes a song is all you need. So thank you for preaching. Thank you for preaching. Oh my goodness, Gabby and Madge. Wow, and choir. But I gotta preach, um, you know, because Will will be mad if I don't, so. Just gotta say a couple things here. Let me start off by saying that we've preached this Ezekiel text only a couple of months ago. We, been, we were in some dry bones then, and this text just kept haunting me. So I was like, well, okay. Let's see why that is. Um, the repetition of, of this text in this moment, I hope, gives you something new. But also, the repetition is what I intended. We are in a dead time, a death-dealing time, a devastatingly death-dealing time. And I am so overwhelmed with the death, I just can't breathe. I wish my feed didn't show me what it does, but it does. It shows me, don't look at this, but look at this. He's in the ground, legs bent in ways they weren't meant to be bent, cotton gauze on his bullet wounds. He's dead, he's still dead, he's dead. And the police officers are acquitted and I can't breathe. Yesterday was the first time I ever heard my friend describe her daughter's wounds, shot seven times in the face, she said, on a grace, and I can't breathe that six people can be killed and the representatives stand up for the people standing up for them and they get fired, I can't breathe. I can't breathe that if you Google shooting yesterday, in Ohio, fist fight turns deadly dead man. On the highway, drive-by rage turns deadly teenagers shot in the back seat. In the grocery store, in the synagogue while praying, in the church while doing Bible study, in the mosque while being holy, FedEx, post office, dance club. And I can't breathe. It's not just the guns that are killing us. One million, three hundred thousand Americans dead to COVID. Hunger. 27% of Americans live below the poverty line. And do you know what that is? It's like $9,100 a year. Who can live? That's called dead children walking. That's called dead families walking. Because our economy is death dealing. We're not meant 
to subsist. We're meant to live and flourish. And so I pick up this text thinking about Ezekiel and thinking about God putting their hand on Ezekiel. God put their hand on me is what Ezekiel says. God handled me. God gripped me. God grabbed me. God grabbed Ezekiel and forced Ezekiel to look. And that's how it feels to me. I who have to turn my head against scary movies or cover my eyes when the news is on and there's shootings. God, God grabbed Ezekiel and made him look at the deadness around him. A vision, yes. A vision depicting the deadness around him. Dead bones in a valley. Caught in the grip of God. Hands held, I think, hard by God. Shoulders turned around. Look, look, don't turn away. You have to look at this. I see Ezekiel's eyes squeeze shut. I see his hands. No, I don't want to. I don't want to. And God's like, no, take a look. Take a look at what the systems do. Children on the battlefield, teachers on the battlefield, death in the classrooms, old people shopping, queer people dancing, Jewish people gathering, Muslim folks praying, Christian folks studying Bible, folks at family reunions, little kids standing outside in the line. Take a look, take a look. One of my favorite rabbis says, an ethical life is learning how to see we ain't trying really to look at this, are we? We'll do everything we can to avoid looking at the death around us, the deadness around us. By that I mean the systems and structures designed to kill us. I'd rather stay up watching the news and answering my emails. We have constructed a way to stay blind we're busy. We're too busy doing the stuff of life on a hamster wheel to really stop and see, to look left and right, to look left and right, and find the death dealingness on the progressive side of the world and on the conservative side of the world. Just angry, violent, vitriol, Violence done in the name of what we think is right as opposed to what God teaches us is right. We have to be grabbed by God. I think we have to put ourselves in the hand of God. I think we have to surrender to the tight grip of God who will turn our faces to look and see what is before us. And the question God is asking, can you see an America that is deteriorating, regressing? Can you see a democracy that no longer works? Can you see the news channels in service of the bigotry? Can you see? the untruths masquerading as truth, so much so that we forget what truth sounds like? Can you see our legislators, our electeds serving the lie? Can you see the ripping of books out of classrooms to make sure the lie stays a lie? Can you see, oh say, can you see? the erosion of civility, the violation against our non-binary family, just because we're too fearful of something different than what we think should be right. Can you see how women are not in charge of their bodies? Can you see the destruction of families because the church has decided 
to get in our bedrooms and our classrooms and our courtrooms and our television stations and our laws and our policies and what the church, the church, the Christian evangelical church, but I've got to call it the church because I'm part of it. The church has decided to make a Christo fascist nation instead of a land of the free and the home of the brave. Can we see something and say something? Can these bones live? I wish I could see Ezekiel, with Ezekiel like, you know God. <laughs> or with Ezekiel like, you know, you know God. Uh, but in the answer is a kind of plausible possibility, right, Josh? Like there is a leaning in to the possibility that what is dead might actually have sinew snapped on the bones and the bones might actually get skin on the bones and the bones might actually have breath breathed in them so that they are reanimated or remembered. Can we remember? Can we remember that actually the God who loves you and me loves them? Can we remember that humankind has only thrived with love at the core of our ethic, that hatred can't drive out hatred, only love can do that? Can we remember, can we remember before we needed a them to identify ourselves as an us? When we were little, everybody was just everybody. There's a beautiful video circulating in my feed made in Great Britain, there, there are pairs of children, um, little boys dressed just alike, uh, but black and white. How, how is he different than you? He likes peas and I don't. <laughs> Can we remember the child part of us whose heartstring was connected to the child's heartstring of our friend and all that mattered was that we would hook arms together and play hopscotch or double dutch or shoot some hoops. Can we remember that we knew that we were inextricably connected one to the other and that we couldn't be fully who we are until you were fully who you are? Can we get back to love? Can we allow God to grab us and shake us and turn our face to look straight at what will happen if we don't? This conference is a lot, y'all. You've told me we're drinking from fire hydrants. Yes. Why? Because it's a hot mess. It's just a hot mess out there. And we can't really afford the luxury of looking at one piece of it at a time. Because all of the systems that are dead are interconnected to one another. Poverty connected to gun violence, connected to anti-trans, connected to anti-Mother Earth, connected to anti-Black racism, connected to indigenous erasure, connected to poverty, and it goes around and around and around. And the system is doing what it was designed to do, which is to kill us. Can these bones live? Yes, they can. 
if we prophesy to the deadness, if we speak truth to the deadness, if we speak, speak truth to the power, if we call out the power, if we name the deadness for the death it is and demand it to instead give life. We can't be quiet about it. My friend Yvette Flinders says, there ain't no closet prophets. Which is to say, you can't sit this one out. Which is to say, we have to open our eyes and look at the hard and drink from the fire hydrant until we almost drown with the truth of how ugly it is and how responsible we are to make it better. You and I are the ones we've been waiting for. The bones can live, the deadness can rev revive, can resurrect. The systems that are broken and putrefying can be transformed, but they can't be transformed with passivity. And they also can't be transformed with so much finger pointing that we can't have a conversation. Nor will they be transformed because we sit around angry about it and don't do anything with our anger. Prophesy to the deadness, call the deadness out, tell the truth to the deadness. We actually are not going to let you kill us. We are going to live. And we're going to live because we choose to live together. We choose to understand that your grandmother's health care and my grandbaby's health care are inextricably connected. That the thriving and surviving of each individual in this room is my business. And yours. If church isn't political, it's not church. If your synagogue isn't political, maybe find Josh's. <laughs> if our congregations, if our faith institutions are not following people like Linda and Tamika into the streets, we are not making heaven on earth. If we somehow have drunk the Kool-Aid that our prosperity and the clothes on our back and the fact that we can pay our rent and that our children are not hungry and that our children do read the books to the band because they're progressive families, if we somehow tell ourselves that we're all right in the middle of this thing, we are deluded. We are not all right because they are not all right. We are not all right unless everybody's all right. We are not saved unless everybody's saved. And what I mean by saved is they can eat when they're hungry and they can go to the doctor when they're sick. And they can get time off when their babies are sick. That's the salvation that God desires for all of us. Let us not fool ourselves to imagine that heaven is our destination or the goal of our religiosity, unless we're talking about reign of God right here, right now. Can these bones? Can these bones live? Can the deadness come to life? Can the deadness stop killing all of us, our souls, our bodies? Can these bones live? Yes, hell yes. 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 But not on their own. We got some teaching to do. We got some training to do, we got some organizing to do, we got some coalitions to build, we got some stories to tell, we got some songs to sing, we got some marching to do, 
We've got some electives to call. We've got to turn off some of the mess we're watching and watch something else that actually causes us to think. We have to stop numbing ourselves with all those COVID reruns. You know what I'm talking about, binge TV. <laughs> so we can speak the truth to the bones and call in the breath, call in the life-giving ruach of God. Can these bones live? Yes. Send some spirit at it. Can these bones live? Yes. Send some love at it. Can these bones live? Yes. Send some truth at it. Can these bones live? Yes. Tell them to get up out of the grave and live. Blow breath in the direction of the B S. As in bad stuff. Shake it up. Make it rise. It's not the ambivalence. <laughs> it's the rising. And let's not talk about love if we don't mean to do something with it. Amen.